Hi guys, this is Emma at Crime Stories Obsessed. So, as we've been following this case of poor little Summer Wells, who was five and disappeared from her home at 110 Ben Hill Road on the 15th of June this year. It's nearly Christmas and it's a Christmas this year she will not get to spend with family, she will not get to open presents and enjoy any festivities that would have normally been on offer at the family home. What I want to talk to you about today is something that you may have heard already. If you haven't, then I suggest you take a little listen to this interview, which was something that was recorded when Molly Go Lightly and her team went to Tennessee in order to speak to friends, family, anybody that would talk about the Summer Wells case, possibly help with any information that might help us to determine what happened to Summer. Also, this information is something that's also being put on um, Olivia's channel on Twitter. She said, we talked to the family of the minor who hung out with Candace Wells and Summer Wells on the 15th of June this year. The mother said, he will not talk about that day. He will not talk about it. Later on that night, Hunter shut down. I didn't even know anything. The grandmother said, he wasn't the same when he came back. He will not talk. He scared shit. He wasn't, he wasn't in the right state of mind when he came back, Ellie. He wasn't talking. I knew something was wrong. Exactly. He will not talk. Do you think he was traumatized? What reason did he have to be traumatized? He had gone out for the day to a small lake with friends, playing in the water. And from what we saw in the video that Candace posted on her TikTok platform, they seemed to be smiling, having fun, throwing up signs, laughing. You know, it seemed to be that they were having fun, whatever they were doing that day. He was splashing somewhere in the water. But what happened that day to cause him to come home, not want to speak about it and to be what Olivia suggested as being, you know, possibly traumatised, which I agree with. For somebody to not want to speak about the events that day, for somebody that was not the same again and didn't want to leave the house... We heard from the grandmother, he wasn't the same when he came back. We also heard from the family that he didn't want to leave the house for days after the event. His father seemed very keen to have him over there, back with him, over in New York, was it? Or wherever it was that they lived. And it just seemed that, that whatever had gone on that day, it caused him to be shook up, traumatised. I'm sure you could think of many words to, to describe the behaviour that he seemed to be projecting when his family asked him to describe that day. Now, when you look at the water's edge, as you can see in the videos that Summer's mother Candace posted the the water was a lot higher it was closer um closer in it seems to to be a lot further out and it seems to have receded while it's so cold which then shows us the trees that had fallen the trees and branches and wood any rocks that were in the water at that time when summer was playing obviously at the time when Candace posted the video and the water was higher we didn't see these branches these trees so evidently you might see the odd branch sticking out of the water but we didn't see the whole trees and what lay underneath the water at that time my question is if he this minor h was traumatised or he was scared to talk about it 
He wanted to try and put it to the back of his mind for whatever reason. Was it because he was throwing um, Summer into the water from his shoulders, splashing, having fun, you know, doing what kids do and playing with her? And she just happened to hit her head or her neck on one of these underlying trees that were just under the water. If the water is not that deep anyway, throwing somebody from your shoulders or playing as boys do, would it have caused an injury? Would it have caused something significant? Now, I'm certainly no forensic pathologist, but from what I can see with my medical background, this is a bruise on Summer's head, on the right-hand side of her head. I feel that something happened that day, whether it be due to some rough play or whether it be something that happened with her mother or her grandmother. And I feel that it was covered up. I feel that Candace knows exactly what happened to Summer. But this is just my opinions and my theories. They're not facts. We all have our theories. We all have our opinions. Was something said to him that day? You do not talk about this or this will happen. This will happen to you. This will happen to your family. Was something said to him to make him that scared that he could not talk about it to anyone and still cannot? Was it said to him that it was his fault and you have done this? If anything is said, you will go to prison. Was something said to him to scare him? He scared shitless. Maybe they threatened him because I know them to threaten kids. They and they the day after he was interrogated, we were interrogated by the TV on. Candace had lost the show from the house. So the following day, Candace and Grandma turn up at the house. I was her grandma, well, with her mother. I said, Hunter, I'm like, who's here? He's like, Candace. So by the time Ali came out of the house, they were gone. And by the time I got out here, they were already left. I said, what did she say to you? They didn't want to speak to Ali. They wanted to speak to H. And then Candace apparently told H that it was okay for him to speak with Candace and tell her exactly what was said because she was the one that sent them over to him. What did they say to you? Did they threaten you? No, mom, it's good. He goes... All they did was ask me what I told the TV. I just, they said that I could tell because they're the ones that sent me. I went to a police department. Do you think that there's a chance that he was threatened? Do you think there was a chance that they put pressure on him by coming round the next day as well, wanting to find out what he'd said? It all seems a bit strange to me. If my daughter was missing, the last thing I'd be doing would be going round and trying to find out what the TBI had said to the person that was with me that day. Why would I care? If nothing had happened, nothing had gone wrong and everything had been perfectly normal and they were just swimming by the river, why would they be care what the TBI had said or what he'd said to the TBI? Like, why would that matter? It just seems strange to me. That one, he does not want to talk about it. Two, he seemed to shut down. He didn't want to leave the house. That they came around the following day to find out what was being said. What do you think about this, guys? Let me know in the comments section.